Just enough information that he's holding it. Look, fucking eyes watering, silly bastard. It's enough. Hello everyone, welcome in. My name is Kai Zemin. I'm a director, cinematographer and writer based in the south of the UK. And today in this video, thanks to your lovely recommendations, we're going to be starting our journey on the world of Warcraft, the Battle of Azeroth. And I believe it's built up over, what, five or six cinematics. And the first one on my list, thanks to you guys, is The Old Soldier. But that's what we're going to be looking at today. And first I'll give you my reaction and then afterwards, I'm going to give it a filmmaker's breakdown. Right then, with all that said and done, let's go, shall we? Play the tape. So far, what I've covered on the uh, when it comes to Blizzard, I've just loved all their cinematics. And the way this is looking already, I think I'm going to love this one too. Oh. Wow, they know what they're doing, didn't they? Look at that close-up. The camera's dollying forward. Beautiful lighting. Blue hour. This is ridiculously good. The Foley. Lord Sarfang. Dude, this is like a proper movie. I was expecting over the top soundtrack and that was it. That Foley sound. the lighting do you think too many his voice whoa there is no honor oh look at her eyebrows they will come for us now all of them oh i can tell that was serious even just why the camera was moving forward is this the calm before the storm? My father, Hikazi. He fought with you in the Third War. He told me stories. How you could cut down ten enemies with a single blow. This is wild. This be my first battle. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> to die. <laughs> yes, of course, but good advice. Too far. May it be with honor in glorious command. There will be no glory today. But say he seems conflicted. I tell just by his body language. And what they've shown me. Only pain. Very good considering I'm a cold caller. I don't know anything about this. Look at the eyes. Make them so human like, don't they? That's how we connect with people or connect with creatures or anything. You have earned your warrior's death, my son. Oh Yet boy. once again, I am denied it. These are so powerful. What are you doing? Claiming what is mine. It's that low key lighting, the very heavy contrast and the use of shadows that's making it look almost realistic and, and just draw me in. It feels like an actual camera. Look at it. It's got like a natural bump to it, and they've got heat haze. Go back. He's an interesting character. A little one. I said, go back. Live another day. Go back to your father. I can't. He's dead. The Horde. It's all 
we have. So, you know me. Is that it? What I've seen? What I've done? I'd watch a full movie on this. Oh, give up, boy. Like you? Wow. It's that backlighting. It's so little, but it's giving you so much information, but just gives you the catchment in the other character's eye. Where he's only got any. Look. Oh, that's nice. Live another day. How human are these emotions that they've got? Wow. This is like a little prelude, isn't it, to... Without armor. Look, the sun's come up now. Using lighting with psychology there. Wow, what a way to start it off. And I've got another five or six of these. Yes, please. <laughs> Wow, made my bloody eyes water that is, that was so good. Woo! First thing I want to bring up about this is the, this was fantastic. Every one I've watched of these is blown me away visually. It, the cinematic team or who deals with these, they really understand how to tell a story. It's like I'm actually watching a movie and it, it's stunning. With these cinematics or these game cinematics at least that I'm watching and that I cover on the channel, a lot of the time, the best ones are the ones that know how a camera works and it feels like a real camera operator, yeah? The ones that don't understand how a camera works and they could be really good character designs and story and everything like that, but it's the camera that lets it down and so when you're watching you go, well, I don't quite feel right. But this, this was amazing. This absolutely blew me away and the moment it stopped, my eyes just gushed with water just because of how visually beautiful it was, the storytelling, just everything about it and that was from a bloody six minute video oh, and and again i'm a cold caller to this i don't really know the world of warcraft story or lore i only know what i've covered on the channel which isn't a lot but let's break it down sure we've got our intro card okay so that tells us who it is but listen to the sound okay the the way the music was and it came harsh in on this shot didn't it boom not a fade from black. A fade from black tells you they want you to subtly bring you into the story. This was a harsh thing. So this tells me immediately how the the tone of this film or what this was about. All because they harsh cut in. Okay, so just within that space of a few seconds, it tells me loads. As a story writer, I know that what we're dealing with and because of again it cut into black cut from black the camera's not the camera's slowly dollying forward as in it's zooming in yeah you got all this texture yeah as in all the snow feel um falling and it just fills up with the layers then we've got flashes to white i believe um yeah great they warp the picture so it's not just a flash to white they warp it so that it gives you this overexposed this halation it just brings you into it more but they're using the sound effects to bring you in from the quiet tones planting a seed for later the things yet to come okay what i want to talk about mainly on this one is two things on this shot one the lighting but really primarily it's the framing look at the framing okay so we've got a widescreen bar so we've got a 235.1 mask that's how it looks more cinematic that's why it looks more like a movie because we've got those black bars in there uh, it doesn't always have to be that shaped mask if you don't want to use that you can use varying shapes either way it will make your stuff look cinematic and look at the framing on this yeah he is dead center yeah look at his eyes they are above the horizon line tells me that he's powerful and look at the intent 
okay i always talk about this on the channel eyes is the most important thing and look at them they tell me everything i need to know he's pissed off he's powerful and yeah it, you know, it tells you everything and then look at the lighting heavy in contrast blue light mixed with warm light okay the perfect contrast when it comes to kelvin that almost that blue and orange look yeah you've got your your colder tones going into 6500 kelvin up to your more 27 2900 sort of kelvin yeah beautiful mix those two color palettes together chef's kiss immediately i'm sold and then boom with a piano plug camera's dollying in by the way meaning it's moving forward wow that alone that little piano ding was enough to tell me the power of what we're getting and look at the titles yeah the titles in your films in your stories by having it come forward towards the camera the fourth wall it makes it look more cinematic because it's moving it also tells you okay this is serious and look the camera then is dollying forward yeah can you see it there it's just moving just moving forward the camera is always moving okay and that's what you get when you get expensive movies expensive movies or high-end cinema normally tends to have the camera always moving and the reason being is because that's what cinema means it means movement okay it comes from the greek term of kinema look at this i love it and they do it with the music don't they all the, the, the piano plug ding 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 and look at this blue palette okay it's really it's just before sunset uh, sunrise beg your pardon but by shooting in this blue hour it they really mix up the the emotions of it they did that for is it the war within is what they call it the, the last the latest cinematic same sort of thing why do we shoot at that time because one it looks it's softer lighting so you see it on their faces uh, let me just get to a close-up of his face here we are look at this lovely soft lighting okay it's beautiful because that's why we like shooting at that sort of time of day one it looks more pretty on the eyes but primarily it's softer lighting and look at this gorgeous yeah he's still interesting enough the key the main key source of lighting here is actually from the fire here it's lit illuminating but when you look at the scene in general look at this little pocket of light over here he's still backlit and that's why it looks more cinematic because people say well how do i make my stuff look more cinematic simple you backlight them or from a 45 degree angle but the problem is with that he would be completely silhouetted so then you need another light source to lift him up and so they use a warmer kelvin mixed with a colder kelvin gives you this beautiful look let me go back five again the camera's always moving Look, you can fucking see it now. Look, looking at the rock, the camera's moving. Look at these layers. Look, the camera is doing an orbit in strafe. Yeah, side strafe around him. And why? Because we are introducing our new character. What I loved about this is... What I loved about it is, is the actual writing itself. Is they've got a character here who is our entry level okay so if this is your first ever cinematic or even if you love the franchise we understand when it comes to script writing you have to make it for cold, cold callers yes people that don't know they use this character for us to be put into his shoes to understand what he's going to understand if that makes sense but at the same time he's there to lift this character he's like his moral compass i love it i love it you always get those characters that that are damaged they hate war they don't want this they don't want that you have the other character to remind them of what they're fighting for or, or the qualities of life. And when you get those interweaving things, one's a veteran and one's new, and you get them into twining, it sometimes it can be some of the best writing. And what I love about it is... Oh. Let me just go back and have a... So the music slowly fades out. The foley, yeah, the oh. diegetic sound, the sounds of the world. That's what diegetic means. It's the sound of the world in the film non diegetic would be outside so the music music fades music fades and all we can hear is this foley of this heavy clunky armor i love it again look at the back look at the lighting yeah it's the way it, the sun was on the other side so they're changing the lighting ever so slightly to make it fit the narrative 
because technically he'd be a little bit slightly a bit warmer as he's coming up over behind me should we say if we're looking at him but instead they've got it right over here see what i mean as in it wouldn't be wrapped all the way around like that but it's fine it doesn't matter it's part of a movie it's a film it doesn't have to make sense lighting long as it just looks lovely that's primarily why you want to do it obviously if it fits the story even better in this case they've used it to fit the story haven't they this is the night before or the morning before or the fight yeah the calm before the storm can i just add very quickly if you guys are interested in framing and as in what makes this picture look more beautiful and look more expensive it's the layers okay is you've got your foreground you've got your may ground and then you've got your background okay you have three layers Sometimes you can have more, so they've got one, two, which would be the fire and these flicker, these fire ash flickers. Him would be the main ground, background mixing with the two. That's like a bloody Bob Ross painting. That's how it looks more expensive. But look at the way the camera's moving, yeah? It's following them. We're always following the camera. It feels like a real camera and it's following them around so we know exactly where they are going. Yeah, he's framed on the left, so we know we meant to be looking on the right because this is called dirty framing. He's dirtying up the frame, what we're looking at. Again, one, two, three. How many do you think? But look at these close-ups. Why have we got these powerful looking close-ups? The reason we have these close-ups is because that is how you share emotion. If I ever teach students and things like that, you can tell when someone's come out of college or university or something and they don't really understand how to tell a story properly, is they'll have like an emotional scene, for example. And like, and they'll, they'll film them in the bloody corner of the room. What's the point? You can't connect with anyone. You don't get the emotion. You need to be where this camera is. Look at this extreme close up. Yeah. Look at it. The camera's framed right under his chin. His eye, his eye level is above the horizon. Beautiful. Wrapped right across the forehead. You normally find your framing in movies. He's here when it comes to that. Okay. So, top tip for you if you're interested in making your photographs or drawings or films, whatever it is more powerful, frame it here, the way I've got my hand, right across the forehead, underneath the chin. We're going to really show emotion. So you you do the eyes. See that, do you see that? Look at the layers, yeah? Look, one, two, we've got two layers, but look what they're doing with the flickery ash stuff. So the fire flickers. So that's giving us our third layer. This is great foreshadowing. This is telling me what the threat is. I'm assuming they've done something wrong. What made me laugh was the character design. I bet I really pissed loads of people off laughing at her eyebrows, but I wasn't expecting that to be like that. But look at this, look. Again, got almost got a golden hour. Yeah, even though most of it's coming from the tree. But look at these flicker of ashes, yeah? They are making it look more powerful, more expensive in your layers, in your composition. They will come for us now. Look at this. Look at the eyes. All of them. It's always about the eyes. You can tell so much emotion here. Again, look at what I was talking about, the colour palette, yeah? So we go from here, which is orange. We go. So we've gone from blue into the warm tones, yeah? The oranges, the reds. Oh, my God. Look at that. Do you see that? These hands. What a fantastic fucking foreground. And the way they're shaking. Wow. They framed it using the shadow. No Beautiful. They will come for us now. All of them. And the camera is moving forward, okay? So if you'll find that in movies or in your stuff that you want to do. If something is important, as in a bit of dialogue or in just an emotion, it doesn't have to be dialogue, the camera will dolly, will move forward towards the subject. Yeah, camera is moving in. All of them. I could tell that was serious. Something has happened. And now the camera is static. The camera always hasn't got, hasn't always got to be moving. It's whatever the story requires. For this, this is a moment we just had a moment of reflection of a past. So that's now. We're having a moment to stop. However, what I really like about this is what I try to do is either the camera is moving because I want you to get from A to B, the, the beginning of the film to the end of the film. 
or commercial, whatever it is I'm shooting. And then in the static shot, so the camera is static, I like my subjects to move. So in this case, he is moving. Tekazi. He fought with you in the third war. Look at these different look at all these different layers, the front, the way they've shot it. You know, we've just had a shot from up here. Got a medium, medium wide shot. Got layers, and then we go to a real wide. He told me stories. How you could cut down it's interesting, isn't it? And then you go to a close-up by breaking it up. Medium shot, wide shot, close up. You get those three rotating out. Yeah, that's obviously important. See the way that was lit? Look at it, look. And one thing about the lighting, a lot of people don't realise it, but lighting is like the key thing. As filmmakers, we are problem solvers on set. That is all we tend to actually do is, is solve the problem of how to capture it. But it's lighting. We are we sh we shape the light to get it to do what we want it to do to tell the story. And look at this. Look at the contrast. Yeah, using the shadow, so we can only see pockets of light, and so it makes everything look more realistic. With a single blow. Beautiful bit of writing. Be my first battle. Telling us about this character, what he's done. What should I do? And then we've got our newbie. Okay, so. I don't like this in, you normally find this in more like, like Transformers movies, for example, something where you know the characters and everything like that. Then they add the fucking stupid human in it to educate people that don't know about it. Oh, what is it? It's a Cybertronian robot. Okay, I get that. But as fans, we already know it. But for me, this is perfect because it's still within the law. It's still the same species. <laughs> Yet I'm learning. Don't die. Yeah. See the camera? Barely moving. You can only see that the camera is moving by looking at the background. Watch. Just very slowly zooming in. Yeah. Yes, of course. Look at this beautiful backlighting here. Yeah. You can separate for him from the background, and he's blue as well. But if I do fall, may it be with honor in glorious color. Interesting. What do they do? Shake the camera. In glorious color. Yeah, so what I like about that is they shake the camera as it hit. I've seen a lot of stuff like that where they'll throw something heavy on the ground and it doesn't look impactful enough. This is great. As it hits, they do they just shake the camera manually. Um Yeah, they've just had like a little warp on it. It looks great, doesn't it? It tells me that that thing is fucking heavy and big. Done properly. I watched a cinematic a little while ago. They threw something heavy on the ground and it didn't shake and it looked dog shit. That's how you do it. There will be no glory today. Look how humanoid they are. I mentioned this earlier. By having them like that, it makes us connect with them. It leaves that last impression. And that is the most expensive and most important thing that you can do. Why is it expensive? Because it means they've had to do something right to spend the money right on the camera or the storytelling to plant that seed to make me think about this. I can't wait to watch the other five. Yeah, they've invested me in it. If they were more goblin, uh, sorry, orc like, no human connection, just acted like fucking idiots, I wouldn't connect to it. With the way the story is written, I've connected with it, the eye shots, everything. And that's how you do it. And so that leaves a lasting impression. And that means that lives free up in my mind going forward. Which every time I hear World of Warcraft, or I might be like, oh, I've seen that. I might pick that up for a cheap. And that's how you can do it. Okay, flash to white. So this here is, um, when it comes to storytelling, you are foreshadowing. Yeah, you are, you are planting the seed for someone to make a reference of. Okay, so this plays a major part. This is almost like him burying his past when it comes to psychology and writing. And yet the other character reminds him of the importance of it. Beautiful foreshadowing. A bit like Harry Potter in the opening lines of Harry Potter. The scar. Yeah, she foreshadowed it years later. That that, that scar left the point about Voldemort. Flash to white. We're going back in time. That's what it normally means. Look, we've got the cold palette. Now even colder. No warm at all. Really changing it up. That to me was one of the most powerful things about this cinematic was the scratching sound. There's music, but that diegetic sound of him scratching it out. Like I feel his pain. Like I can feel my eyes watering because I feel his pain. I don't know if it's because I'm a dad or what, but it's beautiful. 
You don't need to see it all coming out. Yep, skipping of time. Don't need to see him pulling it all out. Just enough information that he's holding it. Look, fucking eyes watering, silly bastard. It's enough. Same with a lot of people if they're filming. Oh, beautiful. Same as you get these people, uh, you know, especially junior filmmakers, if they're filming someone going from point A, they've got to go to a shop or they've got to go to a, a somewhere, yeah? You don't need to see the whole journey. Just bits of it. You are the storyteller. You don't need to see someone going in a shop, buying a whole packet of crisps or whatever, potato chips, and then leaving. In the shop, see them looking around, walk out with, with crisps, chips in their hand. Done. You didn't need to see him do it all. Again, look at that camera. It's moving forward, even on a close-up like this. Look, it's moving in because it's important. Your death. And with his voiceover. The way they interact with each other. Dude, seriously, this is some again, beautiful shit. Now the camera is dollying back now. Why are we dollying back, guys? To reveal the power of what he's doing. And look at the lighting. It's backlit. Look at the texture. Yeah? Foreground, he's roll they're rolling off on the foreground, May ground, backlighting is our background. Texture. The camera then kinetically goes back as well. Yeah, watch. Camera dollies back. Dolly backs again. And powerful delivery. Beautiful. What are you doing? What is mine? Wow. What are you doing? Look at the eyes, yeah? This catchment Claiming. is what makes us look at people's eyes. What is mine? Camera's dogging forward again because it's important. They did a what? A fade to black or a harsh cut mine? black? So a harsh cut black. That's the only bit that pulled me out of it when I was watching. I was like, oh, okay. You didn't... It's fine. But you probably didn't even need... A black cut. I think they did it to just to, to give us a little break to tell people that there is a scene change here. But I was like, oh, interesting, because they've shown so much past of time, you didn't really need it. Um, and again, look at this. Look how realistic it looks, guys, yeah? You know, it looks really oddly strange. But anyway, but it's gorgeous, isn't it? So our key light, so we know our main light source is coming from the sun, which is sh shining towards him, yeah? which is over here somewhere. But look what they've done with the lighting. They've lifted it up enough so it looks like he's primarily got a backlight, even though the key source of light is coming from the flame. Beautiful stuff, isn't it? Look at the shadows. So it looks more realistic as well. Look, the camera's coming up over. Do you know what I mean? It feels like a camera. Look, we've got a little bit of glare off it. Look at these. They look more menacing, don't they? Looks more powerful because of that backlighting. It makes such a difference. If you shot this like middle of the day where it's the sun's up here somewhere sh shining down, these have tiny shadows and it doesn't look nice. It doesn't give you any texture. Another little secret with this stuff is the haze and smoke in the shot. It's this stuff that makes it look uh, like, it's, well, again, this texture looks more believable. Can I just add, this is one of my favourite bits, is how the camera moves. Camera's dotting forward. Look at this. The camera is moving with his steps, yeah? And by doing that, it feels like it, I actually felt there was a real camera operator. And the subtle things. Look at the heat haze. See it? Wobbling. They didn't need to do that. But they did it anyway, and it makes it look more powerful. That is what I call the devil in the detail. Most people wouldn't even pick up on that. And I call it the devil in the detail because it's a bastard to do, and no one picks up on it, and it makes it even worse. It makes you want to cry. But I did. I appreciate it, guys. At Blizzard. Well done. Look at this shit. See it. Again, look at the smoke here. Yeah, the haze. They can use it to hide texture. They haven't got to detail all this up. Ran into foreground, yeah? Foreground, main ground, background. Go back. Here comes more of that narrative. I said go back. Live another day. Interesting. Okay, so you've got this sort of lighting. Yeah. Loads of blue light on him. Huge amounts. But yeah, it's gone here. Watch it again. A little bit here. Loads of it here and here. Because they've zoomed out. They've gone out a bit. So they, they have to lift up the lighting. 
it's fine to have a different lighting look from your close-ups. So we trick it. Go back to your father. Where technically he would have a little bit more edge light here if that was following from the previous shot. But it's okay. It's a close-up. He's dead. Now they bring it in. But technically he would have had that. It would still be brighter looking at the last one. See that? I can't. He's dead. He's dead. Character stops and goes into focus. The horde. It's all we have. It's the eyes, isn't it? It's the eyes that make it powerful. So, you know me. Is that it? Again, camera's dodging forward. What I've See, look how dark he's now become. This is what I was talking about when you get when you have backlighting. Yeah, they become too silhouetted. But we actually want this because he's now become a monster, isn't he? He's lost his human uh, touch. Is that it? What I've seen, what I've done. Yeah, he's become the monster, which is fine. Oh, give up, boy. Like you? Okay, so look at the lighting. Yeah, this is what I was talking about psychology. He is bathed in light, and look at these elements. Yeah, you want me to give up what like you? And look at him. Look at the shadows on him. Yeah, he's a monster. This is his darkest moment. It is always the darkest before the dawn. Look at the light. Yeah, human looking eyes. Catchment. Just get a fucking mobile phone or something with a little bit of a light. Just a torch from afar and you can fake that light yourself. That is what makes or breaks breaks a look because he, they want us to look at his eye or eyes again cameras donning forward see the cameras coming in moving forward he comes out moving forward the monster but he's getting lighter he's getting lighter so what does that do tells us that the scene is changing look look at that perfectly it goes up into the light yeah <laughs> in real life that would never happen but they've done it because it works look at that and it rolls off the shadow rolls off onto it yeah beautiful bit of cloud blue skies are coming again look at the eyes I can barely see it but it's making me look at his eyes and his body language see look at this darkness what he's seen what he's going through to him and the way they've done it yeah they've got a Rembrandt triangle here because they've lit him from a 45 degree angle you find that in if you ever do an interview guys or anything like that or want something more powerful drawings like 45 degree angles get a Rembrandt triangle google it it's a, it's a style and the way he gives him to it yeah he, give, he shows him this necklace but look how he delivers the necklace to him the eyes so the th uh, thread of storytelling we're looking down it goes into the light. If it was into the shadow, which technically it probably would be, wouldn't it? Because he's fucking this big orc things in front of him. He'd be covering it up with his, his, his shadow. But they don't because it's powerful and it's meant to be there for psychology reasons. Look. Remember the light. What you're fighting for. Wraps around him. Little speck of uh, sepia in there. Look at this close up. Look at this framing, yeah? I told you. Gorgeous. Because they look human. And I think it was this I think it was these lines that made my eyes water. Live. Because of the close ups. My eyes watering now. Don't look so menacing now, does he? This looks like an old like an old boy. Like an old, it looks like an old dog. Yeah. All because of the lighting and the close ups. Work that shit together. Music is in there, subtle. Yeah, we've got that non diegetic sound telling us this powerful music score. Okay, music is used as a character. It's a character in your film that talks directly to us. Using the strings. Beautiful. Mix that together. I can hear the foley. I can hear the sounds of the world. There we are. Sun's come up right in the middle. Our shining hope. Yeah, look at this beautiful backlighting. Beautiful. Hm. 
without armor. See? Look at this gorgeous, isn't it? As I said, we add our darkest mo it, it, it's it's like a song. You have your pre bits of the you have the verses, you get your choruses, and then you get your bridge, which is the, in this it was the darkest part of the story. The lighting reflected that. And now we're on the last verse, uh, sorry, last chorus. And everyone's lit up and looks go and looks gorgeous. Two arms. Wow, that's cool. I just gotta watch it again. <laughs> so he stopped, camera then slowed down. Camera's moving forward, donning forward. But look where the camera is. We're looking up at him. For someone that says that, I always say this. Look at where the camera is. true. The camera is pointing up towards him, which means he's powerful. Wow. What a fantastic cinematic, and it completely blew me away. I can't believe... I'm, I feel really lucky that I get to experience these for the first time. But I also have, sometimes having the filmmaking knowledge, it's amazing because I understand what is going on. But sometimes it can actually take away, uh, it can spoil it for you because I know how it's done. I know what they're doing. That's what I'm looking at. But these are so powerful that for moments I stopped talking about filmmaking. And they're so good that they're drawing me in as a viewer and just telling me this emotional story they're fucking the two orcs talking about loss and love and everything that they're doing and yet i can connect with them and get emotional that's how good this story writing is and just overall yeah i, I feel so very lucky that i now have another four or five or six or whatever it is of these left so yeah thank you so much and i'll see you on the next one see you later bye bye Time.